call this meeting to order if everyone is ready to rise for the invitation to play. Good evening. 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 Good evening.
from Parish Public Theater Section 8 Housing Program. Again, the balance $33,497.45. Expenditures $24,653.50. Balance at this time $8,843.93. Regular boxes on the lease for day, family self sufficiency 10, total six days. On your next sheet, you'll find the cash flow report. to approve our monthly invoices. And uh, our expenditures this month from the general fund was $66,043.80. From the road fund, $48,154.23. Health unit fund, $2,039.05. Sales tax, $64,962.58. Brings a total of $181,199.66. Section 8 is $1,193.38. That brings the grand total to $182,393.04. Second. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, sing the final saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carried. And the next item I have is a motion to appoint Mr. Bo Carter to the Saline Lake Commission, effective May 28, 2015. So moved. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. All in favor, sing the final saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? <coughs> Oh, and I was gonna, I was gonna tell y'all, the uh, jurors, that uh, I did get a letter of resignation from uh, from Mr. Um, um, Richard Bagwell. He is uh, moving, so therefore he he's moving out of the out of the parish, so he needed to resign from there. And uh, Buck Carter had been one of the names that had been submitted to me back when Buck when Mr. Bagwell was on here, so I didn't have any other names, and I called Mr. Carter, and he agreed to go on. So I'm still telling y'all, I do have a letter, and it's in your file from Mr. Bagwell, his resignation before we appointed Mr. Buck Carter. And that's all I have, Mr. President. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Next time on the agenda. We have several motions here I need to go through, so bear with me. First one is a motion to adopt the duplication of benefits policy for the Office of Community Development Disaster Recovery Unit grant. So moved. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, so moved. So motion's been made and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? <coughs> motion carried. Next is a motion to assist the village of Calvin repairing the potholes on their following streets, the south end of 4th Street, the north end of 6th Street, south end of 2nd Street, Ed Carpenter Road, the front street between 2nd Street and 3rd Street. So moved. Second. Okay. <laughs> Motion's been made and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, fellas. Uh, next item is a motion to adopt a citizen participation plan and citizen complaints procedure and appoint Ms. Karen Tyler as citizen complaint officer for our complaints with the LCDBG program. That's just for the LCDBG program. So moved. Second. Mo motion's been made and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carried. Is a motion to authorize President Jack McFarland to proceed on the development of the LCDBG uh, application. So moved. 
Second. Motion's been made and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carried. Next is a motion to adopt the procurement policy for compliance with the LCDBG program. Mm -hmm. yeah. been made and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carried. A motion to authorize President Jack McFarland to proceed with the procurement and selection of professional services for the purpose of assisting in the development of the LCBG application and implementation of the project. All second. Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carried. Final motion to adopt the ordinance providing for the levy of half percent sales and use tax pursuant to voter authorization. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carried. That, uh, that is dependent upon the voter authorization. Mm -hmm. Encourage everyone that has not voted to exercise your privilege of being a citizen and go vote. Far or I encourage you to go vote. I'd rather you be called. Yeah, we see that um, the real thing. Any comments before we vote? What we're going to do that about a rock for our old budget? Uh, wait and see what funds come in in July. We will get our second installment for timber service taxes in. And uh, all we can do is hope that timber service taxes are more this year than they were last year. When we slam pickets to July. When we slam to July. Mm. I got one other question I want to ask. Because I mean, the problem is, until you receive the money, you can't spend the money. Uh, uh, yeah. You know, even if we can move money in, and we can, but it's hard to move that much money over there to uh, to help maintain the, the amount of gravel we need until the money's deposited. I mean, you can't write a check until you have the money in the bank. So, I mean. So we're completely out of money for a Yeah, we've already spent what we have budgeted. But for what was budgeted, now, I'm not saying we can't spend more, but what was budgeted was allocated, the money was already there. That money has been spent. You can't deficit <coughs> spend. Sorry? You can't deficit spend. Right. Well, you okay. have to have the money there, you have to have the budget. Anytime you got a wet summer like we had last year, a wet winter, and it's wet right now, it needs that budget of what we budgeted up in the heartbeat. My other question was, uh, I should have asked maybe Perry on this uh, bridge program. Do we receive revenue from the state of Louisiana on our bridge program? No, I think no. we did the car across the thing, funded that project. That was federal. That was that's that's that. Us. Okay, here's my question. How many bridges do we have? 44? Why do we have to have a state inspector come inspect them and they don't put one dime in here and close them the day they're here when they're our bridges? And we have two, at one time, two people trained with Perry to be a bridge inspector. I've had that question asked to me and I have no answer for it. But to be eligible for any funding, through the off-road bridge system, you have to participate in the off-road bridge system. That doesn't guarantee you funding, it just says that if you want to even ask for any money for, road, for, for, for bridges, you have to be a member of this. Now the other thing does is it protects us legally, say for an example, if I drove my pickup truck across Cedar Creek and it collapsed, and the state had the responsibility of in inspecting it and they failed to close that bridge, 
the state is liable for the damages to me, my, my property, and my well-being, and it takes the police jury out of that legal responsibility. So for legal purposes, that's not where we've always been in the off-road grid system, which were two primary things. One, to protect us legally, and then two, because of our funding, it was the only way we had of hoping that they would help assist in repairing the bridges. Now, for example, we used the gap funding, which we got $44,000 to go toward the bridges. And that's state money? And that's state money. Okay. But that's not enough to cover you know, what we're going to spend on having to repair. repair. Well, actually, what we're doing, the two of them, three, uh, two of them, we, are, we will be able to take them out of the road system because the off-road bridge system because we're doing away with the bridges. There will be box culverts placed in them. There are certain guidelines those culverts have to be installed in as far as distance between each culvert uh, to meet the state's requirements. And then once they come and we've completed the project, they inspect it, then that bridge is no longer in the road, in the off-road bridge system. So it's basically for us, it's a permanent repair to a, uh, a continuous problem. Because think about how many old wooden bridges we got around the back. Lots of them. Still got lots of them. We got one down, uh, one that needs to be discussed is on future. <coughs> uh, it's got uh, a warning on it. It has zero, zero homes on that road. It doesn't go to any structures that benefit <coughs> citizens. It is strictly a gravel road that goes to hunting camps. What's the name of the that? That's great. So you have to consider um, if you don't have the revenues to repair the bridges now, why do we continue to allow <coughs> a bridge like this to be in the parish road system? And not they don't write on a priority system. You know, one like we did with the car to cross and you think about how many years it had been asked for and finally one of our state representatives, Jim Bannon, uh, secured the funding through the federal government and <coughs> passed through the state and to the police jury. But that's why, Bobby, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a difficult process. Uh, if you, I agree if you, if you because I call them. asking the same question you asked me. When they close four or five bridges, I want to know, well, wait a minute, you're going to close them. We're in this system, I don't want to them. That is required by federal law that they inspect them. And if you're not in that program, you won't get any funding at all. They program bridges every two years, but unfortunately for the past uh, probably 12, 14 years, we haven't been eligible for funding because uh, of the way the state figured square footage on bridges years ago. Uh, the federal requires the state to inspect them? Yes. The, the state don't have, as long as you're in the bridge replacement program, you don't have any choice. Okay. Okay. I encourage you when you look at your budgets uh, to date, uh, this was printed for the 424. And it says in gravel we spent $40,724.08. We budgeted $50,000. And uh, we've actually already spent the 50. The other just had to come through on uh, invoice. Well, the invoices are here. They just haven't been uh, paid, but they will be paid. So that'll uh, the, the, diminish that account. The, uh, like I said, the only other thing we can do is wait, and we get a timber severance check, check every quarter, and wait and see what that check is. But remember, eight years ago, we got 1.1 million yeah. a year. Now, we're averaging 500 to 550,000. Any other questions? Does everybody understand how timber service tax works? I know.
stocks out there and some of the other loggers. But what happens is, is every time he buys a track of timber, he has to pay, he's got a chart and it's allocated pine pulpwood, hardwood pulpwood, saw logs. But pine pulpwood, for an example, 41 cents a ton. So for every ton of pine pulpwood he hauls off of this unit or this track of property or timber, uh, 41 cents off of every ton goes to the state. The police jury gets three fourths of that 41 cents back to the local parish to go toward road infrastructure. And that was a constitutional amendment that was passed by the voters many years ago. Well, I'll, uh, Anything about it? Motion to adjourn. Somebody? Thank you.